This presentation will continue to address the focus question, how can nutrition and recovery strategy affect performance, focusing specifically on nutritional considerations. In terms of the syllabus, it will focus specifically on during performance nutrition and post performance nutrition. During performance nutrition, it is recommended that athletes consume 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrates per hour of activity. It is important to consume carbohydrates in longer events such as marathons, triathlons and long distance cycling. This is to ensure that the athlete's glycogen levels remain at optimal levels so that energy can be produced throughout their event. During performance nutrition can include carbohydrate drinks and gels because they're quite convenient and high energy snacks such as fruit particularly bananas which are very high in energy and you often see tennis players consuming bananas at points in time during their long matches to maintain their glycogen levels. Moderate to high glycemic index foods are recommended to maintain blood glucose. Unlike pre-performance nutrition where low glycemic index foods were required to ensure a moderate and sustained release of glucose into the blood. High glycemic index foods, on the other hand, release the glucose a lot more quickly, and this is so the body can make use of the glucose during performance rapidly to produce energy to allow the athlete to continue to produce ATP. It's important to consume carbohydrates during performance. In sports like gymnastics, where the event can last for hours. And although it has many breaks, the alact acid and lactic acid systems are dominant. It's important that food is consumed to ensure that the energy levels are sustained throughout the entire competition. In terms of during performance hydration, it's crucial to consume 200 mils every 15 to 20 minutes during performance and isotonic tr sports drinks may be useful because they actually provide electrolytes which are crucial for muscle contraction and also they contain some carbohydrates which can help top up the levels of glucose in the blood to allow for more energy production. Moving on to post-performance, it's really important that hydration is considered post-performance and 1 to 1.5 litres is recommended for every kilogram of body weight lost. Sports drinks may also be useful, particularly isotonic and hypotonic drinks that contain more carbohydrates than hypotonic drinks. And this is to replace the lost carbohydrates and start the process of recovery. Higher glycemic index foods are recommended post-performance because a more immediate release of glucose into the bloodstream is recommended to help provide the athlete with fast access to energy and this can help the athlete to recover and replace their glycogen stores. So you can see in the image or the graph that some of the higher glycemic index foods such as pumpkin, uh, melon fruits and pineapple are great examples of high GI foods that could be consumed post-performance. Within the first two hours of performance, it's recommended to consume 50 grams of high to moderate GI carbohydrates. Similarly, the high-carb diet needs to continue well after the performance and it's recommended that 7 grams per kilogram of body weight is consumed and this is considered important because the fuel recovery over the next 24 hours will determine whether the athlete recovers appropriately particularly after long events and this can help replace lost glycogen so breads, fruits, cereals etc are important to consume to replace the lost carbohydrates and allow the athlete to prepare for their next training session or their next event. Post-performance, it is recommended that a balanced diet is consumed 
that includes sufficient protein. Up to 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight daily is recommended. And this assists with tissue repair and development. And also for those that are taking part in power sports who are contracting their muscles more powerfully than other athletes, more protein is required to help repair those muscles as some damage can occur during those powerful activities. So protein intake can be summed up in this particular table. You can see that those that are participating in resistance training where their muscles are actually contracting against loads, 1.5 to 1.7 grams per kilogram body weight is recommended per day. And elite male endurance athletes also, 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight is recommended. So the, the more intense the, the event is, the more protein that may be required afterwards. Thinking about the learn to statement now and thinking back to the other two videos that you've watched, it's important that you're able to compare the dietary requirements of athletes in different sports, considering the pre, during and post performance needs. You'll be encouraged to visit the Australian Institute of Sport website, which has many fact sheets for a range of sports and you'll be able to find key dietary information, including pre, during and post performance needs. In class, we're going to do a very detailed comparison of a range of sports so that we can see the requirements for pre, during and post performance. Thank you very much for listening.